you can open the book of Luke, chapter 17. And I'm sure the verse that we all have heard before and we'll start out with, but it will look a little different than most people think of it. <clears throat> Luke chapter 17 and verse number 5 says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the apostles realized exactly what they were asking here. Right. And that's what I'd like to, to look at. So he rebuked them a little bit in the next version. And he said, If you have faith of the grain of mustard seed, you might say, In this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. I don't know about you, but I don't have enough faith to do that. Right. But faith is often, if not always, increased by the trying of our faith. Yeah. Uh, we can look at two verses of James chapter 1. I think we looked at this several weeks ago, but... <clears throat> So in James chapter 1, verse number 3 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4 says, But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. Oh, and then before that, he said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations, your trials. Oh, if we want our faith increased, we. Most likely have to go through these trials and temptations. Right. He says we work with patience. If we go over to Romans chapter 5, Paul expounds, Paul has a little more. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Here it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen. For faith to be increased, these, these trials, temptations, tribulations will come our way. He says it will work patience, and then patience will bring you about say, experience, Experience will bring about hope, and hope will make us not ashamed. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that is how faith is increased. So we just think sometimes one would be like the apostles and just say, here you go, and give us another dose of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like medicine, though. That would be too easy. You know, faith has to, to increase our faith, we have to learn to rely more and more on God. That's really what man is. We'll, uh, we'll turn over to Hebrews 11 in a moment, but first I want to look at some verses in Job, or at least consider them. But Job, his faith was tested, wasn't it? Amen. Yeah. I was thinking of that song, God on the Mountain. Mm -hmm. The second verse of it says, we talk of faith when we're up on the mountain. The talk comes easy when life's at its best. Right. And we can talk a lot about faith and say a lot of things about it. But the next line says it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when faith is really put to the test. Amen. You know, we like to quote Job 121 that says, you know, Make it came out on the living make it shall return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Or, Job 2.10, when he rebukes his wife and says, Have we not received good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Or Job 13.15, it says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Amen. Those are all good verses. Those are all good things to take encouragement from and look for as an example. But I never hear anyone talk about Job chapter 3 very much. Right. We can turn there and read. <clears throat> After Job had, had all his possessions taken away, his children were killed. Uh, he was basically left with nothing. Notice the first 12 verses of chapter 3. He says, 
After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day, <clears throat> Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, the night in which it was said there is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness, let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it, let a cloud dwell upon it, let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it, let it not be joined with the days of the year, let it not come into the number of the months. <clears throat> Lo, let the night be solitary, let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight therefore be dark, let it look for the light, but have none, neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut up, shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from my eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breast that I should suck? Mm. And that's not so encouraging in the scriptures, is it? Right. Yet every last one of us would be in the same, if not worse, state. I think if we were in the same situation as Job. Amen. To have the to have all our possessions taken away, our children slain, and then have your wife to say, "Why don't you just curse God and die?" Right. Job was, we might say, depressed at this point. He was certainly not encouraging himself in the Lord. Right. Notice he, he cursed the day he was born and he said, let it. <clears throat> he was so downtrodden, really. He said, Lord, let it be numbered among the days of the year. You basically, want that day in which he was conceived to be wiped clean off history. Right. I mean, he goes as far as to say, why died I not from the womb? Why did I give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? And yet we know that really by faith, Job would be delivered eventually, but the trying of our faith oftentimes brings about very difficult times. Amen. Yeah. So we, we can look back and see the ending of Job and how the Lord blessed him greatly, but I'm sure at this particular time, Job did not think, well, the Lord's going to bless me here in a few years. Right. No, he looked about him and his friends came and they weren't very much of an encouragement either. No, I think we, we talk a lot about what we would do or what we should do until we're in that situation. I don't think any of us could say what we would really do. You're right. Amen. We're oftentimes like Peter. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Mm -hmm. And then nine, three times before the morning comes. Right. Or, again, Peter, we get on him a lot, but when the Lord had been crucified and buried, when you say, I go a fishing. Mm -hmm. you know, we can say we would do this or do that. We would stand strong but until your faith is really tested. I don't think you can say what you would do. But we, I would use the example of Mary and Martha, when Lazarus died, they they did have at least enough faith to say, Lord, if you've been here, mm -hmm. Mother had not died, but we would question God not even more so if we were in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Go out trying of our faith will always mature our faith, it will always grow our faith. But it's not necessarily an easy thing to go through. So we, we want the faith that we can say the mountain be cast in the sea and it's cast in the sea. If the sycamore tree be removed and it's removed, but we don't want the experience that takes us there. Right. Let's turn over to Hebrews 11 and <clears throat> look at some of these, what we often call heroes of the faith. Mm -hmm. It didn't have it so easy all the time. Amen. I'd like to look just at several verses throughout this whole chapter here. We begin by telling us what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And faith is not logic. It's not something we can obtain by man's reasoning. 
Amen. And as we'll see, faith often can make us look foolish in the eyes of sinful men. Notice, again, in verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered a, unto God a more excellent sacrifice and came, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, it he being dead, yet speaketh. Amen. Abel had to make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. so he couldn't just do his cane and offer whatever he felt like, but he offered that which God had told him. And ultimately, it cost him his life. Right. We say, well, do you be willing to give your life just in the regular service of God? Mm. Abel didn't really do anything outstanding, if you will. He just was serving God as he was led by the Holy Spirit. Right. <clears throat> as he was been taught by, I don't know if God was still speaking directly to him at that point, or had him taught him, but he was just simply trying to serve God, and it cost him his life. Right. We see in verse 5 and 6, it says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, was not found because God had translated him. For, for his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Enoch walked so close to God that he pleased God. Amen. No doubt he had a forsake certain things to walk so close to God. Amen. You can't hold hands with the world and hold hands with God at the same time. Amen. James said you can't be friends with the world and be friends with God. The friendship of this world is enmity with God, James says. Well, I don't know what life was like in Enoch's day, but I know he had a family. I know he had children to take care of. Yet he was still able to Walk so closely with God that God just took him. Amen. Said so he probably didn't have a lot of worldly possessions. He probably didn't seek after a lot of things that we like to seek after. I know he they didn't have automobiles then, but I'm sure he didn't want the finest chariots or horses or whatever little transportation they used. The best mm -hmm. sandals to wear. Right. He was worried more about pleasing God than things of this world. Verse 7, we see, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the, which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. It took a lot of work to build that ark. Amen. Again, I don't know how technologically advanced they were at that time. I think they were more than just cavemen, but Mm -hmm. Even if you had all the modern power tools that we have, it still take a lot of work for just you and your sons to build yeah. a boat that big. Mm -hmm. And then to preach for numbers of years and only your immediate family would be saved. I'm sure he preached that destruction was coming and people probably mocked him, scoffed at him, laughed at him. Right. Yet, we have this account here of Noah and his faith. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, oh, it'll be okay. He didn't tell him how good it was going to be or how easy it was going to be. But no, he simply did the work which God called him to do. Yeah. So should we do, even if it's hard work, even if there's not a lot of success in our eyes yet. By, I believe by the work of Noah, the world was spared and the human race was spared from destruction. Amen. If Noah was like us, it would have been time for the flood to come and the ark wouldn't even have been finished yet. Right. But we, we are too often prone to put things off when it comes to serving God. You're right. <clears throat> Going on verse. 8 through 10, we have Abraham here. It says, By faith Abraham, and he was called to go into a place where he should have to receive for inheritance, obeyed, he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. 
Abraham, if you know, was told to get up and get out of his homeland. As it says here, he went out and not knowing whether he went. Mm -hmm. How would you like that to get up and go with your wife and just, God says, well, you just go and I'll tell you where to go. Right. Mm -hmm. well, most of us want a, a drawn out map and detailed plan, don't we? You got it. Yet it says, by faith he obeyed God in this. And then he says he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. He didn't go, you know, from Dover over to Clarksville. He went to a place he didn't know at all. Right. And so he dwelt in tabernacles. That's that's tents, just temporary dwellings. Mm -hmm. He never set up a three-brother brick home anywhere. Mm -hmm. Why is that? He says, for he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, this world is not our home. We're just passing through, as the song says. Amen. It would do us good not to put down too many roots here. Mm -hmm. We were talking about family, and you know, mine's been in this general area for at least 150, if not 200 years. Yet, this is not our home. Amen. Well, we need to be like Abraham, looking for that city. Be builder and maker of God. Amen. Well, verse, <clears throat> verse 11, we read of Sarah, the true faith. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. So, I can't imagine that that was an easy thing for Sarah. Sure, a joyful one in the end, but. Can you imagine being 90 years old and bearing a child as a woman? Right. Well, Sister Diana, we're not there yet, but could you imagine even now having to bear a child? Mm -hmm. You didn't have modern medicine or C sections or anything like that to help you out. <laughs> and yet, when she was 90 years old, she bare this child. Amen. But faith, like I said, does not always lead to easy things. Oftentimes it calls us to go through things that are difficult for the flesh, at least. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to verse 17 or 19. We read of Abraham again, this time with Isaac. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Here's that son that Sarah had. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Kind of God was able to raise him up even from the dead, and yeah. also he received him in the figure. So here we have Abraham and Isaac, the promised son, when he said would be heir and would be his offspring would be as the stars of the heaven, the sand of the seashore. Amen. And then God tells him, Well, I need you to go up there and offer him as a burnt offering. Hmm. So this, even the promise aside, I can't imagine having to take up your child offering him to God. Could you, Brother Larry? Yeah. When Adam was born, you would no. very easily walk up the mountain and say, Well, here you go, God. Well, he had the knife drawn back and everything. Right. But he says he he believed that God was able to raise him from the dead. Amen. I think many of us would not have such faith. But sir, that was not an easy thing to go through, but yet the reward at the end was a great blessing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And he would say, you and God shall provide himself a land for the burnt offering. And we go down to verse 23, we can read of Moses. <clears throat> really, this is Moses' parents at first. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hit three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Amen. If you remember, the, all the Israelite males would be killed at that time. So by faith, it says Moses' parents would hit him. And they built him this little park, this little box, <clears throat> hit him over in the, the weeds of the river. Mm -hmm. Again, can you imagine taking your little child and stumbling away over there? Mm. And just committing them to God, because that's what they had to do. Amen. Well, it just so happened that Pharaoh's daughter walked up and found him there. Amen. And, you know, again, it just so happened that 
<laughs> they said, well, we need someone to nurse him. And they went and got his own mother to nurse him. Man. Well, it was no coincidence that God worked out things the way he did. You're right. We got those things took great faith on them. Starting first with Moses' parents. And we read verse 24 of Moses himself says, By faith, when he was coming here, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses could have had all the riches of Pharaoh. He was probably in line to be the next Pharaoh. And yet he says he chose rather to suffer affliction with people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right. Sin offers a lot of good looking things, but it's only for a season. Right. Verse 26, it says, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. Well, the riches of this world, they fade away, but the riches which are in Christ will last for all eternity. Amen. But yet, because of our lack of faith, we often choose the riches of this world, don't we? Verse 27, we read again of Moses. It says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. When he left Egypt, all its comforts and all its idolatry was well. Right. Because it says, For he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Well, I don't know at which point Moses was saved, but he had some point he knew who God really was. Amen. And he knew those idols in Egypt weren't weren't the gods, weren't the real gods of the Bible. They weren't the gods that are to be worshipped. He, Amen. He knew that all those riches and even the great fame and position of power he could have were not worthy of what God had for him. Verse. 28, he still read of Moses again, says, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn and should touch them. I'm sure some thought, well, what kind of foolishness is this, Moses? Right. You want us to take some blood and paint on our doorpost and the lintel? Mm. Yet God oftentimes calls to do so that doesn't make sense to the flesh. Right. Because then after that, he said, well, if you do that, your firstborn won't die. But if you don't do it, your firstborn is going to die. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, well, that, we might say, well, that's foolishness. If nowadays, God's so loving, he wouldn't do anything like that. <laughs> you know, modern equivalent is God wouldn't send anyone to hell. Yet we know very well that he has power to cast into hell. Amen. It is through faith we have Christ as our Passover. Amen. <clears throat> Again, what what sense would it, would it make to the flesh to, to eat unleavened bread and to get rid of all the leaven that was in the house? A little leaven's not going to hurt nothing. No. Mm. That's what the world would say. Amen. Or well, and I really don't like this flat bread very much. Mm-hmm. It's not. I've never taken a Lord's Supper and said, "Well, man, I wish I had a whole full meal of this." Mm. But yet, they kept the Passover by faith, knowing that one, it was the command of God, and two, it really it points us to Christ and how He is our Passover, how He was the Lamb that was slain for us. Amen. Verse 29, we read the Israelites as they passed through the Red Sea. It says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea is by dry land, which the Egyptians, the same do, were drowned. I was wondering how big the Red Sea is. It says that its narrowest point is 16 miles across and its widest point is 190 miles across. I think the Tennessee River over here is only about a mile across at its widest point. <laughs> and then it's an average of 1,600 feet deep. Mm. If you imagine standing there before this and saying, this 
old man saying to you, well, you're gonna, we're going to go down and walk across here. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have enough faith to do, even do that to Cumberland River, much less right. something as big as the Red Sea. For one, I can't swim, so if the Lars came back, I'd be done for anyway. <laughs> But it says they pass through, not even through muddy ground. But it says they pass as dry ground. Amen. They weren't buried up to their knees in mud. And it rained a lot this last week. My shoes were still wet yesterday from. You no, know, they they were kicking up dust. But right. They weren't sodding down with water. They weren't. They were struggling to way through the ankle deep water. Amen. Okay. And I had to take a great deal of faith even just to walk across there. <laughs> Those Egyptians, they tried it and it didn't work out for them. Right. You go on to verse 30, it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. If you know the story, they were to march around one time for six days, and on the seventh day, they were to march around seven times. And the priest was to blow a trumpet, and everyone was to shout, and the walls were to fall down. And physically speaking, you would say, well, how is that possible? I know there's a lot of Israelites, but I don't think they could have made enough noise to make the walls of Jericho fall down. Right. And yet, by faith, we must do whatever God tells us to do, even if it might look ridiculous to the enemy. Amen. David, I'm sure the people of Jericho were looking out saying, what are, what are those foolish Israelites are doing out there? The world often either will look upon us if we're trying to serve God in the same manner. What are those foolish Christians doing? Mm -hmm. so, Faith doesn't rest on logic or human reason. It's simply the trusting in God and His commands. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Verse 31, we read of Rahab. By faith, the heart of Rahab perished not with him that believed not. Amen. And she had received the spies of peace. I don't, know, I don't know what kind of laws Jericho had, but she was essentially guilty of treason in our day mm -hmm. for harboring the, the spies. Yet she didn't, she didn't have respect into that. She rather, she, even though being a harlot, it says she received them by faith. Amen. Faith will oftentimes calls to go against the world and its ways. Amen. It may call us to forsake those around us. But Lee Rahab, she got all her family in there and told them. They were delivered as well, but the rest of Jericho, they were destroyed. Amen. If I remember the story right, every part of the wall fell except for Rahab's house. Again, that doesn't make sense to the, the flesh, does it? Right. You got this walled city, and all the walls fall down, and there's just one little house left standing. Amen. Yet, faith will do such things. Verse 32 through first part of 35, we read of other great victories of faith. And says, what shall I say more? Or what shall I more say? For the time of failure until of Gideon and of Eric and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. And we could spend probably hours more looking at each of these what we want. But it says, here's a summary here. It says, here through faith. Subdue kingdoms. Amen. The subdue kingdoms, it takes fighting, doesn't it? Amen. So they brought righteousness, they obtained promises. We like to obtain promises, but sometimes even those promises are not easy to obtain. It says they stopped the mouths of lions. How many of us would want to go up against a lion? Mm -hmm. Yet we know Samson did, and David did, and even Daniel was cast in the lion's den. All right. It says in verse 34, they quenched the violence of fire. I think of the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were facing the fiery furnace, and yet right. they said, 
We're not careful to enter thee, O King. We have known our God is able to deliver us, but not, we will not bow down to the golden image which thou hast set up. So the, the modern health and wealth gospel would say, well, everything's going to be okay, it's all going to be easy, but <laughs> being cast alive into a fiery furnace isn't an easy thing, is it? Amen. In fact, they said they turned up seven times more than hotter than normal, and the guards that took them down there were were killed just from the heat of it. All right. And yet by faith they were delivered and came out not even smelling like smoke. Even says that Christ himself was with them in the fire. Amen. Without the exercise of their faith, they wouldn't have experienced such a thing, would they? You know, God could have, I suppose, could have said, Okay, and I'll soften the heart of Nebuchadnezzar and he's not going to cash in the fire. Yet we see a much greater victory in being delivered even from the furnace of fire. Mm -hmm. So we always want the easy way. Faith oftentimes requires us to do it the hard way. Amen. He goes on to say, <clears throat> They escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong. They waxed valiant in the fight, they turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Amen. What a great thing that was for those women that had their dead received to life again, but yet they had experienced death first. Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha had experienced the death of Lazarus to see God's power over death. Mm -hmm. The widow of Nain, she also had to. We read of several Elijah and Elisha. Resurrected. It was out the first being one that died, there would have been no seeing the resurrection of the dead. We would say amen if the, they would receive their dead to life again, but what about when death came? Right. Would we say it is well? Mm. And then notice in the next part of this. Turns as things that aren't so glorious to the flesh, at least. Verse 35 it says, Others were tortured. Mm -hmm. This tortured seems to mean that they were stretched out like, like the skin on a drum. That's a torture device. They were tortured, it says. They were. I lost my spot here. Not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. yeah. If your options are deny Christ or be tortured, which one would you choose? Right. Without great faith in God, you'll be like Peter and deny that you ever knew him. Even though the third time it says he said he cursed and said, I know not the man. Mm -hmm. Don't be so sure to say that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'd say we're no greater than Peter. Right. Left to our own selves, we would deny him just as much, if not more. And it says, verse 36, the others had trial of cruel mockings. And they were derided, scoffed at, and not just lightly, it says very cruelly they were. Mm -hmm. So then scourging, that's whippings or floggings. Yea, moreover, bonds. They were being shackled and chained and imprisonment, thrown into jail. They were stoned. Mm -hmm. They were sawn asunder. That literally means cut in two. Right. The Hebrew tradition says that Isaiah died this way. It says they were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. I guess they didn't have on nice suits, brother. Right. If you come in here in sheepskin and goatskins, you can say you were just as one of the prophets were. <laughs> the coat of camels here is John the Baptist wore. Right. The faith doesn't necessarily lead you to great physical possessions. Unless they, were, they wandered about, they didn't have some nice home to reside in. Right. First, the last part of that verse says, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Mm -hmm. Of whom the world was not worthy. Most again, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. When 
the last two verses as well. It says, And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Mm -hmm. For these all, they suffered all these things by faith. And no doubt they looked forward in faith to the coming Messiah. It says here they wandered about in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. They didn't. They didn't have. They said a nice fancy home to go to. Right. They didn't have nice material possessions. You know, God bless you that way. You can thank Him for it. But Amen. Oftentimes, drawing close to God, not going to lead you to the things of this world. You're right. It says they obtained a good report. Mm. Without the great faith, we would not be reading them. Okay, but this, these accounts here. When I think of the disciples, you know, we read about Peter, we read about James, John, a few others, but by and large, there we don't hear much about them. Either. It will happen to Matthew. You know, he wrote the gospel. I say, oh, that we don't have much account of them, do we? Right. Bartholomew and Nathaniel, we don't have much account of what happened to him either. Mm -hmm. Or Andrew, or all these other apostles. You know, it's, I think by their testimony they served God, but they didn't necessarily have anything great faith to write about. Right. Would be said of you that you have a good report, or would you just be the the average Joe that mm. flies under the radar? You notice know, the last part of the verse is they received not the promise. <clears throat> they endured all these things and they still didn't even see the Messiah. We we look back that Christ came and he died for us. Mm -hmm. They were looking forward to the coming Messiah, and they were, I'm sure no doubt hoping that they, he would come even in their lifetime. Much as we look forward to the coming again of Christ. But if he doesn't come in our lifetime, are we going to be any less blessed of God? Or are we going to say to God, well, I'll serve thee as long as I don't have to face death, as long as I can get out of here by the mm -hmm. catching away. We're blessed. You're certainly blessed if you go that way, but if he doesn't come for another 100, 200 years, we are simply to serve him by faith. Amen. Verse 40 says, God having provided some better thing for us that they without flesh should not be made perfect. Mm. The better thing is Christ. He's speaking of that Christ would come, that Christ would die. He said, All these they look forward to the coming Messiah. But we look back by faith on the already slain and risen Christ. I'd say they had to have even more faith that he was coming. Mm hmm. Yeah, we know he came, we know he died, we know he paid the penalty for our sins, we know he rose again. And yet we often still don't trust him as we often do. Right. We're often like the disciples, oh, ye of little faith. So the trying of our faith is the only way to grow our faith, the only way to increase our faith. But it doesn't necessarily lead to easy times. So there's great victories to be won through faith. We read about several of them. But even those difficulties, even those victories often come with difficulties. Mm -hmm. do, we, do, we, excuse me, do we want to say as the apostles, Lord, increase our faith? Mm -hmm. If so, we can be sure that trials will come, difficulties will come. But often this causes the rest more on God. Mm -hmm. If not, Maybe our faith wasn't as strong as we thought it was. Right. Okay, let us not be like Peter and say, I know not the man. I go a fishing. Let's not be too bold to say, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee either. Amen. Well, the faith must rest completely on God and what he has done, on Christ and what he has done, not on anything that we do we think we will do. But so let's not be too haughty to say what we will do if trials come our way. Right. Because we might be like Job and curse the day in which we were born and conceived. So 
Lord, we by faith there was great victory awaiting the child of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's close with that thought. <laughs>